Yeah, I'm Dave Spence. I'm the director of the Stroke Prevention and Atherosclerosis Research Centre at the Robarts Research Institute at the University of Western Ontario in London. So the goals of our study were to find out if it's a good idea to give high-dose B vitamins to patients who have diabetic kidney damage. It's called diabetic nephropathy. Yeah, we were very surprised by the results. Um, in fact, so surprised that when, the, when I first saw the results, I thought maybe we had the randomization code reversed. Uh, but we checked, and sure enough, patients on the active high-dose vitamins had lower levels of a blood clotting factor called homocysteine, which is why we were giving them the vitamins. So the, the randomization code was correct, but what we found out was that high-dose vitamins made the kidney function decline faster than the non-active placebo tablets. And patients who were randomized to high-dose vitamins had a higher risk of strokes and heart attacks over the three-year follow-up. Uh, so we were shocked, actually, by the results. Yeah, people with diabetic nephropathy and significant kidney impairment, impairment of kidney function, should probably stop taking high-dose B vitamins. It doesn't mean they can't take low doses. And the, and the reasons we think um, for our results are that these B vitamins are normally excreted in the kidney or from via the kidney and so we're, we're concerned that because the kidney function was impaired these patients may have not been able to get rid of the high dose vitamins the normal way and they may have built up toxic doses. They should stop taking high dose B vitamins. We don't know yet about low doses. Um, one of the consequences of this study is that it means we're going to have to look at other ways of lowering homocysteine levels in patients with kidney failure and that's something we've been working on with medications called thiols that, that bind homocysteine and get rid of it through the kidneys or through a dialysis machine. Um, we don't have any reason to think, um, in fact there's good reason not to think that high-dose vitamins are harmful in people with normal kidney function. There have been a number of fairly large randomized controlled trials showing no harm of vitamins in people with normal kidney function. This is the first study that I know of that's clearly shown harm of high-dose vitamins in people with impaired kidney function. So diabetic nephropathy is kidney damage from the diabetes. It's thought to be largely due to damage to the small artery branches in the kidneys called arterioles. It's known that homocysteine aggravates the function of those arterioles, and that's why we thought lowering homocysteine levels should make the kidney function better. Uh, so that's why we're so surprised that it didn't. The study will be published in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, on April 28th, 2010. Um, I should say that it was conducted not just at Western and at Robarts, but at academic medical centers in Toronto, McMaster, and, um, and Winnipeg, University of Manitoba. Yeah, so one impact is that we now, we now would advise that patients with kidney failure from diabetes and probably kidney failure from other causes should not take high-dose vitamins to lower homocysteine. The second impact is that this means we need to get on with finding other ways to lower homocysteine levels, such as the thio drugs that seem to work even in dialysis patients. Now, there are quite a few people presently taking high-dose vitamins to lower homocysteine and uh, what this means is that if they have kidney failure they shouldn't be doing that.